Now that my window AC unit is installed and running, I was hoping that I could find a way to keep some of that cold air in the bus to keep me comfortable while I'm working. So this week on The Gray Escape, we're building an insulated wall and front door. Let's get to it. The first thing that I did was cut and install a two x four from the floor to the ceiling to act as the door jam. I added a piece of angle iron, but took it off for the rest of the building process until the end. I wanted to create a stop for the door, so I used this piece of angle iron and I made sure that it lined up with the front of this uh, piece because you are actually going to see this on the outside by clamping a flat piece of metal overhanging the edge and butting the angle iron up to that piece of metal. Um, now I'm hoping that these screws don't stick out too far and get in the way of the door, but um, that should be where the door stops when we close the door. I wanted to build an insulated door, so I went ahead and split a two by four to act as the side framing for the inside of the door. So now what I have done is I have clamped the two sides that are gonna be the inside sides of my door to where they're going to go when their door is actually in place. And uh, I've placed these paint sticks in between in order to leave enough room for A, the door to open and close, and B, enough room for uh, some sort of weather seal or something like that. So now all I have to do is measure the distance between these two pieces at the bottom, middle, and top so that I can make the cross braces for the inside of the door. Since the measurement of the middle, top, and bottom were all a little bit different, I took the average of the three and cut a board to that length, split it into three pieces, and I laid this all on a flat surface and screwed it together from the sides. Now I'm going to insulate it and skin it. Um, I may actually put a couple of blocks in the corners just to make sure it stays square. I settled on using hardboard to skin the door. I know that this material doesn't do well with moisture, but I planned on putting several coats of latex paint on the outside of the door, so the moisture didn't really concern me too much. We used some liquid nails to glue the frame to the first piece of hardboard and clamped it down tight to ensure a good bond. We had to give this some time to properly set before we moved on to the next piece, but in the meantime, I made a run to Home Depot to look at my options for insulating this door. Regular insulation costs an arm and a leg, so I went ahead and got this uh, kit that's actually for um, insulating your garage door and these are three quarter inch pieces. They did not have any one inch foam there. And since I wound up making this out of two by fours, um, I think two of these should fit um, stacked inside that door. After adding some scrap pieces of wood to the corners for stability, I put the insulation in and added the last piece of hardboard. We clamped everything down real tight, just like before, and let the door sit for 24 hours. I sanded down the hardboard on all four sides to make sure that it was completely flush and to create a smooth surface for paint. So here's the wall that's going to be next to the sink. I have uh, put this beam in to make it even so that we could put a door in here. I insulated the wall and um, on this front side I used some hardboard or backer board sometimes they call it. It's a very thin um, MDF. And uh, I know that MDF is sometimes susceptible to moisture, so I am gonna paint this. Uh, but yesterday I uh, went through my garage and I found an old can of um, sealing, like popcorn sealing spray. And they sell that stuff in a spray can. I also had a couple of uh, knock down texture wall spray cans. Everything was almost empty, so I kind of used everything uh, that I had left on here. And um, when I ran out, I used a little bit of spackle um, that I had watered down and I just put it on my fingers and flicked it at the wall. You let that dry for a little bit and then take a, um, 
like a scraper or something like that. I'm just gonna use this to show you. And you just very, very lightly drag it along this to flatten out all of the uh, bumps. So that's a knockdown texture. And um, I know it looks like kind of a mess right now, but when I paint this, it's gonna look pretty nice, I think. Um, and that was just to cover up some imperfections. And um, like down here, I did not have a wide enough piece for this whole wall. So you can see that there's a triangle right here that I had to cut an extra piece and add that. And that would just drive me nuts to look at that all the time. So it's gonna be a lot less noticeable um, with this wall texture and paint. this door here on both sides a couple coats of paint I have painted this wall here again a few coats of paint I reinstalled this angle iron to stop the door from falling out forward and uh, now I got to put the hinges on so I went ahead and bought these and marked where I want to put them on the door um, now I know that a lot of people inset hinges and I'm not doing that unless I absolutely have to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the hinges on this door and then try and transfer the marks over here. I don't know what the right way to do this is. I checked online, watched a couple of different videos and uh, there's no real consensus on whether the door hinge goes on the door first or on the jam first. And this isn't a traditional jam either, so um, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. But um, I'm about to go ahead and uh, install the hinges on the door. So I'll pick you back up once that's done. I didn't expect this to go perfectly the first time and I'm glad that I didn't because it's not going perfectly. So uh, firstly, uh, one of these is the wrong size. This top one is larger than the rest of them. Um, these two are three inches and that one is three and a half inches. I have no idea how that got by me at the store. Another issue is that even though the door is square and the opening is square, when I go to close this, it hits at the bottom of this door. I'm not exactly certain why. Um, because the opening on this side looks the same to me the whole way down. I guess I'm just gonna have to inset these hinges. So I guess I'll do that and get back with you guys. I used an oscillating tool to mortise these hinges and as you can see I made a giant mess doing it. The top hinge is not quite as far inset as the middle hinge and the bottom hinge is very far inset, but that's what I had to do to get the door square in the opening. A little touch up paint and we'll be good to go.
In order for the door to latch securely closed, I need to install one of these plates. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough space on here uh, because this is very thin and the door sticks out pretty far past here. So I did wind up having to cut this out with a, um, a hammer and a flathead screwdriver that I sharpened using a file into a chisel because I don't have the proper tools for the job. So if you don't have the proper tools, make the proper tools. Um, so this, it looks very small, but it does actually catch the latch and um, this now fits in here. I would really like to eventually slice off uh, this edge so that it can sit next to the angle iron instead of on top of it, but this doesn't prevent the door from closing. And so for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and install it the way that it is. But later on down the road, next time I have my angle grinder out, I may take this down so that it can sit next to, next to the angle iron instead of over it. All right, ladies and gents, this is the final product. For being a bus front door, it doesn't look half bad. Um, I did put a ceiling in the cab here. It was a royal pain, and as you can see, the edges are terrible. But the door looks great, and the wall looks great. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that this door turned out. And um, I guess that's it for this project. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more. We'll catch you next time on The Gray Escape.